Hey everyone, check out how I made these Valentine's Day heart bowls with some scrap pine using a router bowl bit and my custom router table sled. I get a lot of satisfaction from using up scrap wood and figured this would be a great way to use up some shorts while testing out the router table sled that I had made a few weeks before. I had four scrap pieces from a pine 1x10 that all measured less than a foot long. Um, they were actually pretty ideal for this project since when I made my router table sled, I made it to fit boards that were nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter square. After I got these boards glued up, I cleaned up the edges on my table saw. Uh, I, I made sure to cut everything a bit long the first time uh, so I could run the opposite sides through and use the table saw to clean off any of the glue squeeze out. I have a build video where I show how I made this router table sled and a few things to keep in mind if you decide to try it out for yourself. Um, I'll make sure to either link that on the screen or in the description. Here you can see me installing the router bowl bit and extension. This is my larger bowl bit. It's uh, one and a quarter inch in diameter. It's big enough that I don't bother with hogging out any of the wood with a Forstner bit. Um, I got this bit and the extension both off Amazon and I highly recommend them. Um, I'll link those in the description too. You can see the black Sharpie mark I have in my router table. I use those as a guide during my drop-in. I really prefer using the router table over holding the router, but the one drawback is uh, you're not able to see the bit and it could wreck the jig if the cutter head hit it. That point aside, using a router table sled is the way to go. First thing is how much safer I feel. My hands are never near the bit. The second is the repeatability of the project. I can completely route out one of these bowls in 15 minutes. Uh, and the last is the almost perfect dust collection. I just use a shop vac and it pulls all the dust and chips down. It actually is slightly hard to lift um, the sled off the table because the suction is so good. So these boards were one and a half inch uh, thick. So I wanted to leave a quarter inch at the bottom and that meant I needed to uh, route out one and a quarter inches. I didn't do that all in one pass. As a matter of fact, I think it was easy, eight or nine passes, a little bit over eighth of an inch each time. I do that small amount, that way I avoid chip out and I get a real smooth cut and a really nice smooth um, bottom. After I cut the hearts uh, out on the bandsaw, I sand the outside down to 220 before rounding over the bottom. Uh, I actually just purchased a ton of new sandpaper for my rigid oscillating belt sander, my random orbit sander, and my hand sanding blocks. Uh, if you're like me and hate spending money on sandpaper, you should get it off Amazon. I got a 10 pack of the belt sandpaper for under $10, and I got this um, 100 pack of 5 inch disc sandpaper for about 15 bucks. I'll link those in the description because I mean, it's crazy how much more affordable it is off Amazon than if you were to go to your local hardware store. So everyone's least favorite thing to do is sand, but because that router bit is so sharp and big, I didn't really have to sand the inside of the bowl, which is like the most tedious part. I just had to do like the inside lip and edge, um, kind of like where there would be tear out, it's a little bit rough. It's, it doesn't really tear out, but it's just not as smooth as like the bottom or where the grain really runs. It didn't take me long. It was maybe like four or five minutes of sanding. So this is me leaving my comfort zone. If I'm making something, I'm almost always covering it in poly. Um, there are projects that I paint around the house, um, but I rarely stain anything. So this was uh, Barn Red by Minwax, and it's the transparent version. Um, wiped it on, wiped it off, and I gave it 48 hours drying time, and it was still like moist. So I was a little bit worried that this experiment was going south. Um, and then I put my first coat of poly and it, I mean, it turned my rag red. Um, matter of fact, it actually turned the first three coats rags red. You can see them off to the side, but six coats in, I was able to start sanding in between and ended up doing another two coats. When I'm sanding between coats of poly, I use 220 and I try and sand everything really lightly and I leave the dust on while I apply the next coat of poly. And then for my last step, I'll take some of that brown paper bag and buff it all out. It gives it a real great smooth finish. Well, thanks for watching. Please help me out by subscribing and hitting the thumbs up.